Hello and welcome to Crank Your Damn Just to 11. Uh, what I want to do today is go over using THC to combat uh, insomnia. I had made a video about CBD and insomnia. And CBD worked great for me for a while, but eventually I developed a resistance to it. And uh, what I did is that I switched from CBD to THC. And you should be aware, I think CBD is legal across all states in the U.S. Um, not federally, though, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but THC is a very different ball game, where you have states that allow it uh, recreationally. You have states that require a medical card. You have states that just plain disallow it. And at the federal level, it's still illegal. Um but in the state of Maryland, uh, we can buy THC legally if we have a medical card for it, and I do. So um, I got my medical card, and for I waited for a while before buying some. Um, but eventually the CBD didn't work for me anymore, and I decided that I should try THC. And so far it's been a success. Um... So for CBD, I had to go online and, and figure out different products. Uh, but the CBD I was getting for me, every time I was getting CBD, it was CBD. So CBD from one company, CBD from another company. There was no issue of strains, really. For me, CBD is just CBD. Um, but there may be something I don't know yet. Maybe I will find another brand eventually of CBD that works better than what I had. Uh, but... For me, it just felt like it was all the same product from company to company. Like if you buy water, you're buying water. Uh, you can buy mineral water or you can buy flavored water, but water is water. So if you just buy a bottle of plain water, then it's water. And if I buy a bottle of CBD, it's CBD. For THC, I found something very different. Where it seems that uh, the particular strain that I'm taking does make a difference in the effects that I'm getting. Um, so the first time I went to buy THC, um, I pretty much was following what the manufacturers were claiming in their literature. So if they were saying that this THC is especially good for sleep, I would buy uh, that THC and... Um, in my experience, the manufacturer's claims are very unreliable. Uh, I could buy something which is said they say was good for sleep and it would make me sleep well, and that claim was true, but I can buy something from a different manufacturer, and I did buy some tabs that were made specifically for sleep. It's got good night, if I recall correctly, I'm not sure. And these didn't work for me at all. Um, you know, if I take them during the day, I do get high, but it doesn't help me sleep at night. Um, so that's the first thing. I don't believe the manufacturers when they say this is especially good for sleep. I'm just not listening to them. And this is not surprising because prior to using CBD or THC, I used prescription drugs and a lot of the prescription drugs were not doing anything for me so those prescription drugs that have been surveyed by the fda and then you know they're approved and for sleep and so on and so forth did nothing for me <laughs> so i'm not terribly surprised if there are some thc products out there that say well yeah this will make you sleep no problem and then it doesn't do anything for me so i have to be more careful about what i pick one thing I discovered looking at my purchase history, it looks like Indica strains are better for me for sleep than Sativa strains. And I think if you go look in the literature, you're going to see similar, a similar kind of, of result that people report better sleep with Indica than uh, Sativa. So now when I go to a site and I look at products, I try to narrow it down by strain to Indica at least. And I should mention that I've run into problems with doing that because if you use sites like Weed Maps or there's a site I think called Dutchie um, that is used by one of my dispensaries. So if you use those sites, uh, 
they have very nice search functions and one of the function you can choose to search is by strain so you can select indica sativa or hybrid unfortunately and there's nothing much that the people at ween map or uh, dutchy can do about this or any other storefront what i've discovered is that the sellers the retailers themselves do not code their product properly. So at some point I was searching for Indica edibles and I was finding nothing. And I was thinking, this cannot be true. And then what I did is I unselected the Indica search label and I picked, you know, all strains, just show me all every strain. But in the text field where you can search for text, I typed in Indica and then I got hits. And what this tells me is that the retailers are too lazy or don't know how the system works and they don't mark their products properly. And I've done more searches and sometimes I found Sativa. If I clicked on, on the Indica filter to just get Indica, I got, I got Sativa stuff, I got hybrids, I got all kinds of... It, it makes it difficult to find the right stuff for me. But at any rate, I've been able to determine that Indica works better for me for sleep. The other thing is, um, I, I know I've, I found a specific product and I, I might put that in the description, the products that I'm using and those that I think didn't work for me. Um, and as usual, I'm not getting any money out of this. It's not a referral link. It's not anything. It's uh, just for your benefit. Uh, because I value my independence. I don't want to become beholden to a sponsor or something. Um, so I've been able to find products that work well. And those products are Indica. But there's another thing that puzzles me. Is that I'm looking at two products. And they're almost the same. The product that works well for me has I think 10 milligrams of... THC and too many grams of CBD or something like that. I'm not, I don't remember actually. I think it's 10 milligrams of THC and 20 milligrams of CBD. That's better. So 20 milligrams of CBD plus 10 milligrams of THC. And then I have another product which is also an indica strain, but it's just 10 milligrams of THC. And those are the products that are the same strain. So they should be, as far as I'm concerned, you know, indica versus indica should work the same. But one has a little bit of CBD in it and the other one doesn't. Um, I have to say the one with CBD works much, much, much better for me for sleep. And even for getting high, if I want to spend an afternoon feeling the effects of THC and maybe, you know, dealing with anxiety or something like that. Um, the product with the CBD works much better for me than the product without the CBD, but they're the same strain. They're both Indica, and this puzzles me a little bit. I've not been able to ascertain whether the CBD is what makes a difference. I don't think it does, to tell you the truth. Based on past experience and other things, I don't think the CBD is what makes the difference. But it makes me think that within the Indica family, there may be specific strains of plants that work better for me than you know just indica in general and i haven't yet figured out what strain i should be paying attention to for sleep so i know i need to go into indica and then within indica what what do i need to do i don't know yet but it's been promising because for the past few nights Previously, what, I, what, what, what what would happen is that I would fall asleep just fine, and then after two hours, three hours, or four hours, I would wake up, and my night would be over. Um, but recently, I've been able to go back to sleep during the night. So I wake up. Sometimes I read for a while, and I don't get out of bed. They say, get out of bed, go to the living room, and I don't even do that. I stay in bed. I read for a little bit, then I turn off the light again, and I'm able to go back to sleep. And sometimes I don't even have to read. I just turn around and just let myself go and go back to sleep. Um, and that has happened more lately. Uh, this being said, I cannot tell you whether it's the 
THC or the um, cognitive behavioral therapy that did it. I It might be a combination of both, that the THC makes me more receptive to the cognitive behavioral therapy or the cognitive behavioral therapy might... Um, I might be doing its thing. I th actually, that's one thing that with cognitive behavioral therapy is that it takes time for it to act and it can be very disappointing when you start with it and it, it just doesn't work um, or it appears to not work. You know, you you do everything the psychologist says and you're still having shitty nights. Uh, I think it takes time for it to start resetting your circadian clock to be able to have a full night of sleep. Like I've been having lately, so I'm I'm optimistic that I'm going to kick this insomnia in the butt, um, and that I'm going to be able to find specifically what strain works for me for THC. But it, it brings me back to CBD, THC dosage, uh, what to use, and so on and so forth. What I think is that the THC world seems to be much more person dependent than the prescription world. If you're in the prescription world, it seems to me like you take Tylenol, Tylenol and your headache is going to go away. You take metoprolol, your blood pressure is going to go down. And it's pretty much the same for all people, except for chemo. I think when, if you get chemo, then the symptom, the side effects you can get can vary pretty wildly, but the other drugs are you no know, pretty much all the same for in the THC world and the CBD world dosage, how much you should take, when, the timing, the specific strain, the specific... All those specifics, for me, it seems to be much more person-dependent. So, if you go and ask your friend, what should I take for sleep? They may have a great product that works greatly for them, but it's not going to work for you because it's not the right strain, or it's not the right dosage, or something is wrong. Um, I was saying earlier that the two products I was comparing, one product, the product with the CBD, if I take half a chew in the afternoon, I'm going to have a, a pretty good buzz. Half, half of the total dosage. With the other one, if I want to have the same effect, I need to take two chews. I need to double it. But they're the same, nominally they're the same THC dosage and the same strain. So, that that kind of stuff puzzles me. It's either like they're using different plants within the indica variety and one is better than the other, or maybe the production process of one kind of mess things up in terms of the potency of the final product, whereas the other one is able to preserve that potency. I, I'm just puzzled by that. But, you know, right now it's going well. I'm, tomorrow probably I'm going to go buy more... Um, stuff and I'm going to usually I try to add a new product every time uh, when I buy uh, new chews so I'm going to buy the product that I know works well for me and I'm going to buy a new product to try and see how it works maybe you know I'm, it's possible I'm going to have edibles for sleep and I'm going to have edibles for uh, when I need something uh, milder in the afternoon and when I take THC in the afternoon I try to reduce my dose so that um you no, know, it's nice, but I'm not crashing down the floor or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, um, those were my observations on THC, and I think THC is a great thing. And in Maryland, they're going to have a, I think, a vote on in the next election to legalize it for recreational purposes. I think that that vote should win. And it would mean in 2023, it's somewhere in the year 2023 that it would be uh, uh, decriminalized at the state level. So it would do away with all the medical cards and people could just take uh, THC uh, as they see fit, like they do alcohol. And in my mind, there's no difference between alcohol and cannabis. Well, there are some differences, but in terms of, you know, if you allow alcohol, allow cannabis it's hypocritical to say you can get yourself drunk, but you cannot get yourself high on cannabis. Um, there's no material difference there, uh, in my opinion. So, um, I'm, with, with these thoughts, I'm going to leave you and uh, see you next episode. And uh, thank you for listening. 
and uh, goodbye. Whoops, wrong one. Goodbye.